Hey guys, it's Paul. And Shannon, the yes. camera woman today. The camera woman, awesome. Okay, so I wanted to start this vlog off and kind of tell you about something that happened to me that was pretty funny. Um, I actually had to drive down to Pottery Barn to pick up our coffee table. We talked about that in our previous vlog. And I like, I like driving like decent trips because I get to listen to the radio and I learn all kinds of fascinating stuff. But every now and then you hear a funny story that you maybe didn't want to hear. <laughs> I had that moment today. So um, the people I was listening to, they were talking about all the great classic rock acts that were coming around this summer. Um, we're filming this vlog on May 24th, and in a week and a half, Shannon and I get to go see Def Leppard and Journey. Woohoo! Woohoo! So that's one of the acts that they were talking about. Um, but they were talking about like, oh, this summer's just jam-packed with all these great people coming around. Like the Eagles are on tour, Steely Dan's on tour, Steve Miller, the Doobie Brothers. Um, I can't think of all the different people. Um, Alice Cooper's coming to town. We're going to see that too. Um, there was like, I, I don't know, it was like 50 acts. I was like, man, that's, that's a lot of really good people that are coming around to town. And I was really excited because they were talking about, oh yeah, we're really excited about this person or that person. Oh, it'd be great to see these people. And then they were like, and this list was published by the AARP. <laughs> that earlier and I just cracked up. I thought that was funny. Yeah. And so that just makes you feel real good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting to be about that age. We are getting to be about that age. And what's funny is kind of Shannon and I are of the age where we were young when like say Def Leppard was really big and really popular. Um, a lot of people were, you know, 10 years older than us. So that would make sense. They would be right in that age where they're like kind of the beginning of the AARP. Um, I told you guys in a different vlog that my friend and I, we went and saw Bon Jovi a couple weeks ago. Great show. Um, but definitely my friend and I, you know, he's uh, 50, I'm 44. Am I 44 now? Yes. Just turned 44. There we go. I don't know how old I am. <laughs> You're 44. Okay. Good job. Um, you know, we were definitely on the younger side of the crowd um, for the average. So yeah, I mean, I guess a lot of these acts, they're their fan base is getting a little bit older, so I guess it makes sense. Um, but it's still just funny to think of that uh, in that way. Um, especially mm -hmm. when I hear the term classic rock. It's just kind of funny. So anyway, just thought I would share that with you. Maybe you guys think that's funny. Maybe you think it's sad. I don't know. <laughs> or maybe you're like, Paul, don't say that. That's just yeah. not nice. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Seriously. It, it is funny, though, when I think about like all like the really big albums that like I loved as a teenager. Like um, Def Leppard's Hysteria, Guns N' Roses, um, Appetite for Destruction, Bon Jovi's New Jersey. A lot of these albums are celebrating like their 30th and 35th anniversaries. Wow. Now, that's that's I mean, crazy. That's pretty crazy when you think about it. Um, Thriller, I think, turned 40. Oh my word. Right? Hang on, is that right? Thriller? No. Thriller was 1983, so 93, 2003. 2013. 30, 35. 35 yeah. years. Yeah, 35 years. So, crazy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is pretty crazy, but, you know, hey, that happens to the best of us. But uh, I, I know, know, and just to bring it Disney-related, the other day I was shocked because I heard Toy Story was, you know, yeah. as old as it was. Yeah. What, what's Toy Story? 20? It's 20... Or 25? 20 20-something. Yeah, isn't that crazy? It's crazy. So, anyway... Um, yeah, so that was uh, that was my little fun story today, where I rode that emotional roller coaster, went really high because I'm like, oh, they're talking about stuff I love, and it was found in the ARP. Mm. <laughs> That's awesome. So anyway, hi. Mm. No. All right, our neighbors are getting their pool today. <laughs> we we got home from running some errands. They had a big crane next door to us, and. There it is. It's like a preformed pool that they're gonna drop in that hole that they dug. So they got like some rocks and stuff delivered this morning. They had a little bobcat out there smoothing some things out. And I mean, here they are. They dug a hole yesterday, and now they've got this thing to you know the pool to go in it. That is just pretty wild and neat. So they've got a team of uh, three or four guys out there guiding that pool in. I want to see them. I want to see if they get it dropped in well enough. Let me try to zoom in and see if you can get a better picture here. There we go. Okay, well you're seeing our screen a lot in there. Nothing I can really do about that with it being zoomed in. Sorry about that, guys. 
Let's see. Let me try zooming back out a little bit more. Let's see if we. There we go. Oh wow, they're dropping it down. That is just incredible. Let me let me lift up here, and see if I go where there's not the screen. There we go. It's a lot clearer. Oh man, that looks a whole lot better. Check that out. So a couple of these guys are in the hole with the pool. Man, look at that. It's in. That is just wild. That's amazing to me. So cool. All right. Our neighbors have a pool now. They just have to fill it up and go swimming. Obviously, there's some hookup and stuff that has to happen, but pretty cool. Okay, so if it isn't one thing, it's something else going on in the house always, you know, because we got to stay on our toes and be kept busy. I don't know that anybody has ever had this happen except for... My son looked it up on Google and it has, but who would have thought this would happen? I have a bug in my computer, not like a computer bug, a real bug, a bug bug. It's right there. Do you see that? So I can't get too close. It blurs out, but there's a little teeny tiny bug right there that somehow crawled into my computer. Oh, Paul's right moving the mouse. There. Yeah. That's a bug. <laughs> it crawled into the computer and died. So now there's a bug sitting there that I can't get rid of. So. My son says that you can take the glass panel off the front of a Mac. I'm gonna film this. This might be, this might turn into a horror movie because I might scream. Sometime I'll have to tell you my long history of Paul destroying my computers. So um, Paul's not, he's gonna be semi-involved this time, but he's not the one doing it. So we're gonna update you and see if we can get rid of that little bug out of the computer. Okay, so Paul is over there. My Mac is laying down. It looks really big on the floor. I feel like we're prepping for surgery here. Yes, you guys are prepping for surgery. Okay, go ahead. Start the surgery. All right, so we need, what do we need, duct tape? So we're not gonna be able to catch the surgery on camera because we have a shy participant here, Paul. <laughs> anyway, I will show you like, if I can, I'll show you something. Okay, so duct tape is being applied to the front of my computer right now. So supposedly if you get enough duct tape on there, you can separate the glass from the magnets that hold it on there. Um, I'm not really sure if this is real or not, or maybe we're just watching some YouTube video that people are just secretly laughing because you ruin your computer. Maybe. We'll find out here. So Would it be best if I did like from each end, or is it better from one corner? Okay. Okay, so they're just trying to get that duct tape on there, and then we'll just... It, it doesn't it's, look like it's very strong, does it? No, it seems this like... This is what the video said to do, but It seems like I don't the magnets know. are winning. We now have Simon interested in the computer shenanigans. I'm not thinking the duct tape thing is going to work. Yeah, I mean, this is like super sticky duct tape, but it's just coming straight off this glass. Someone's like, hey guys, what are you doing over here? How did the bug get underneath? Yeah, how did the bug get I'm... in the computer? The house is clean. We don't have bugs, but there's a bug in there. It's crazy. What do you think, Simon? It's like a little gannet. <laughs> Simon's like, get it out. I don't want bugs in the computer. So the verdict is the duct tape did not work. The bug is still there, which is kind of annoying. Um, I guess it's something I could live with or I could take the computer to the Apple store, but we have one more trick in the bag. We ordered a suction cup from Amazon. It was only $4 and apparently people have used them to pull the glass off successfully. So in a couple days, we're going to try that and we'll let you know how that goes. But for now, the squashed dead bug remains. Good morning, guys. So it's actually the next morning. It's bright and early. It's seven o'clock. Um, we have a delivery first thing this morning, so that's kind of cool. Get it out of the way. So Pottery Barn's here. They are bringing the two shelves for my beauty room. I'm super excited about that. Um, number one, because I'll have the shelves, but number two, hopefully now it won't be as echoey in there when I try to film. So I'll show you, let's see. Let's see if we can catch them. They're on my porch right now, kind of unpacking everything. Let's go spy. Do, 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 do. Is it spying if it's your own house that you're looking out of? I don't really know. So, <laughs> okay, let's see if the camera has time to adjust. 
There's a Pottery Barn box. Yes, my bookshelves came from Pottery Barn Teen. That's only because they match the vanity perfectly. They're from the same collection, so. There's Pottery Barn truck out there. Ooh, they're taking the box off a the shelf. There we go. So I'll show you, I'm not gonna film the guys once they're in here just for their privacy, but I will show you the shelves once they're in. Hey guys, it's Paul. So I am sitting outside of my local guitar center. Um, when I say local, it means in Raleigh. This is actually a really cool spot because here's a huge guitar center and literally right across the street, um, you can't see it. Um, I can't like turn the camera around and show you, but literally across the street is a huge Sam Ash Superstore. So if you're a musician, like Raleigh is kind of the place to be because there's two great music shops right across the street from each other. Um, yeah, I'm getting ready to go in here when they open up. Uh, I've got about 10 minutes till they open and I think I'm gonna get a guitar today. So yeah, uh, in just a few minutes, they're gonna open up. And um, I've been wanting to get a guitar for a long time. Uh, I think I've talked about this in a vlog before, but in case I haven't, um, I started playing guitar when I was in high school. And um, you know, just to be honest about it, I never really was terribly disciplined about it. Um, I kind of learned some tricks, some fun things that I had fun doing, but I was never disciplined and, you know, practice what I should have been practicing. Instead, I kind of just did what I wanted to do. And so I kind of, I reached a level of skill, which was fun, but was just really never okay with me. Um, except for, I didn't want to spend the time to get better at it at that time. And so over the years, uh, from the time I went in the Marine Corps until now, I have had this on again, off again relationship with guitars. Uh, it's kind of funny in our house. Shannon laughs about it. The kids laugh about it. Everybody's good natured about it, but they just kind of know with me, like I go through these phases where for a few years, I'll have a guitar, I'll play it. And then I'll kind of get upset with myself that I'm not getting better as quickly as I should be able to. So I'll get rid of it. And, um, so we're at that stage in my life where I'm going to get a guitar again. And uh, I've gone through the ridicule at the house, all in good natured fun. Um, I deserve it. Totally understand. Um, but yeah, today I'm going to pick up a guitar. Hopefully, um, hopefully. So, uh, today's actually, let's see, what is today? The Wednesday, the Wednesday after Memorial day. So it's like May 29th or 30th. I forget. I don't know the date. Um, but on Memorial Day, I came down here just to kind of hold some guitars, see if there was something I liked. They actually had at Guitar Center um, a used Gibson Les Paul 2009. Uh, really a nice looking guitar, a great feeling guitar, sounded wonderful. Um, and it seemed like it was a really good price. Um, I don't like to make major decisions like that just on the spur of the moment. So I went home, did a little bit of research, thought about it a lot, you know, kind of went back and forth about, do I want to get a guitar, don't I? Um, and so here I am on Wednesday morning, uh, just waiting for them to open up. If they still have that guitar and it still feels the same way it did on Monday, I'm gonna buy it. Um, so kind of getting back to the on again, off again relationship with a guitar, uh, let's talk about that for a minute. Um, read a great book by John Acuff. Uh, he's a guy that's affiliated with Dave Ramsey and uh, he's a great writer, very humorous, a lot of fun. Uh, he wrote the book, I think it's called Begin or Start. I can't remember which. And I read that and that was really good, but I just finished his book called Finish. I just finished his book called Finish. And that opened my eyes to, um, to a lot of stuff about really about the way that I thought about things. And guitar is, guitar is just one of those things, but since we're talking about that, it's a great thing. And he talks about uh, perfectionism and how it really plays a lot of psychological games with you and messes you up and kind of robs you of a lot of joy. And I feel like that is something that has happened with me with, uh, among other things, guitar being one of them. Um, I'm a competitive guy. So if I try to do something, I really try and do it the best, not the best for me, um, which should be good enough, but the best of the best. Um, Unfortunately, you know, we're all, we all only have 24 hours in a day. We all have natural talents and abilities, and we all have a different level of skills, uh, you know, that we're blessed with. Um, and you know, I, I'm a hard worker in a lot of areas, but I'm lazy in some, in other areas as well. And so since we're talking about guitar, that was just something where I said it a little bit earlier, but just to reiterate, if like I set these imaginary bars for myself, like really high in my head. And when I don't measure up to that, to me, it's easier to 
not look at, at, at what I have learned and how far I've come from where I started, but how far away I am from where I would like to be or what I would like to sound like one day. And because I feel like I'm that far away, it's kind of like, well, just forget it. You know, I'm just going to quit. And I'm going to go do something else. Um, and uh, after reading this book, it really opened my eyes to that kind of thinking and in, in, in how that thinking translates into a behavior and a mindset. And um, so, yeah, I'm really, with, with this, I'm trying to kind of kind of break that cycle, if you will. So my goal with getting this guitar is not to become, you know, a great rock star. This is not going to become a guitar channel. Um, not going to be playing songs on here, I don't think. Um, maybe, who knows. But... It, it really, it's just kind of for me, for my own satisfaction to have it, to be able to pick it up at night, you know, kind of when we're done working and I have like an hour, hour and a half to myself. Number one, it's a physical release, which um, I really like that. I, I, I'm a fidgeter. I like to fidget. I like to pace. So guitar is a very good outlet for that energy that I have, um, as well as it's something that over... Over the rest of my life, hopefully, you know, if I stick with it, I can get better. I'll probably never be where I thought I would like to be when I was a teenager. Uh, but maybe, who knows? Um, it, but even if I'm not, that's okay. Um, and that's kind of where I've gotten to with this. And um, so I'm, I'm really happy about that. I feel good about that. Um, so hopefully they have that guitar because if they don't, I'm not, I'm not planning on just buying a guitar to have one. I'm looking for that specific one. And if they don't have that one, or if it doesn't feel the way that I'm thinking in my head it did, then um, I'm, I'm not... I don't think I'm going to get anything. So, uh, so anyway, um, I'm not going to film inside of there. That's why we're doing all this in the car. Um, they have some pretty strict rules about, about, uh, recording inside of there. Um, as well as they usually play music and stuff like that. So, um, so to not infringe on anybody's property, um, you know, we're not going to be filming in there. So anyway, uh, I'm going to head in in just a second here cause it's getting really hot in the car and I think they're about to open and, uh, I'll let you know what I got. So Paul's back with his new present. There's Paul. <laughs> but I wanted to show you guys just really quick because you haven't ever seen this room yet, I don't think, on a vlog. And we haven't done a house tour yet. So this is our game room upstairs. This is like the man cave. It's a big, yeah. it's a big man cave. Look, it, it goes in even further. Okay, so we have chips because you need those in a man cave. That's right. So our sons and Paul mostly hang out in this room. I come up here and watch TV with them. But there's a TV and games. There's Paul. He's going to show you his goodies. So this is our furniture from our old living room. Well, the living room at our old house. But this table is new. You guys haven't seen this. This is from... No, did we show this? No, we haven't shown this. Okay, that's from Pottery Barn. We got it like on the scratch and dent sale. <laughs> it was like a floor model. Great price. Awesome coffee table. Love it. This chair doesn't normally sit here, but I'm about to film Paul talking about his new toys. So I need a chair and then there's just kind of the rest of the room. So our TV, that's our furniture from the old house. And then there's a huge closet over here that we just have for storage. So let's go sit in the chair. I feel like we're, look, it's like an interrogation chair. <laughs> I'm going to sit here and interrogate Paul. Okay. Okay. All right. So I ended up getting two things. Um, got my guitar. Woo here it is. It's awesome. It is. I'm really happy with this. This is a Gibson Les Paul Studio Deluxe 2009. Uh, this color is Vintage Sunburst. It has a few little scuffs right here on the finish and right up here on the headstock. There's a little teeny tiny nick that probably, unless I pointed out, you'd never really notice. Um, that gives it character. What's that? That gives it character. It does. Um, yeah, I mean, looks great. It's beautiful. Back. Um, I'm not going to go over all the specs about it because number one, I don't really know them, and number two, that's not what you're here for. Um, I feel like I got it as a, on a great deal. I bought it used. Uh, I bought it for less than half of what a brand new one of these would cost for this year. So, uh, so I'm thrilled with that, and that just kind of goes to show you know, um, you know, buy used, let somebody else take the depreciation hit, unless, unless there's that one guitar that you walk in like you just pick up and like, oh my gosh, this is the one. I had that moment a few years ago. No, not a few years ago. About 10 years ago now. And I, he left it. Well, it, technically it was already sold to somebody. I knew, oh, okay. I knew these guitars were coming out. It was it was a guitar very much like this. It was a Les Paul. It was Slashes from Guns N' Roses' signature model. Happened to hear about it or read about it in a magazine. 
went into the guitar store. They didn't have one for sale, but they had one they had sold to somebody and the person was coming in that night to pick it up. So they let me hold it and play it for a few minutes. And I didn't have the money to buy it then. But if I had the money to buy one of those, I would have bought it. If, if I can go back in time, I'd buy that guitar. Um, <laughs> But anyway, but that, that is something. No two guitars feel the same. Even though they might be exactly the same make and model, they just don't feel the same. Each one is unique. Each one has its own character. That particular one was the perfect one. So if you bought that guitar, <laughs> I will buy it from you. What city did you buy? What city was it in? Raleigh. Raleigh Guitar Center it came from. Okay. It was the, uh, what was it? It was the, the Tobacco Sunburst slash Les Paul. So somebody so. in Raleigh or a surrounding area has your guitar. Yeah, well, that was something I was saying when I was out in front of Guitar Center. Um, that little area of Raleigh, there's Guitar Center, and right across the street, there's Sam Ash. People come from all around for those two stores. Um, also, that, that's just an opportunity for me to say, I didn't say it before, and I meant to, but I would love to shop at like a mom and pop store. And there are a few guitar stores and music stores in Raleigh that are like mom and pop kind of stores, um, not the national chains. Unfortunately, they just don't have the selection. And I looked online at their website and they just didn't have anything that I wanted. So the opportunity to go look at several hundred, if not maybe a thousand guitars across the street from each other was too good for me to pass up. And um, I just happened to find one that I really liked. So anyway, um, nothing wrong with not going to Guitar Center or Sam Ash if you prefer shopping locally. I strongly encourage that, but a lot of times they just don't have the selection. All right, next, this guy right here. This is an amplifier. Um, not only is it an amplifier, it is also uh, a head for cabinets. So you can actually power like really, really big amplifiers with this, which I think is really cool. I will never do that probably. I just don't need it for that. Um, the volume that comes in here is all I really need. And it does all kinds of really cool stuff, which again, you're not here for, but I'm excited about it. Um, I had hoped to kind of plug it in and plug this into that and play for a second, but my cord's not long enough to film it properly. So anyway, we'll maybe do that another day. Uh, so yeah, that's what I got today. Really happy. I uh, want to thank my lovely wife, who, said, <laughs> who when I said I saw a guitar, she said, go buy it. That's right. Go so, buy it. So for all you wives out there who are watching, if your husband comes home and says, uh -oh. I found a guitar, or I found a chainsaw, or I found a gun, or I found a new car, or a new truck, or something, just tell him, go buy it. <laughs> this, this tags on with a couple vlogs ago, the women were asking for help letting their husbands buy them clothes and shoes. Yeah. Now it's the guy's turn. That's right. That's right. Now how often, how often do I go buy myself something, Shannon? Paul hardly ever buys anything for himself. Yep. He just wanted me to point that out on camera so yeah. it could be on record. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but Paul constantly buys stuff for me, but like he pushes for it. I like do. he loves buying stuff oh, for I me. Love it. <laughs> but how often do I go shopping for like shopping like the way I shop, not buying something. You go look at guitars all the time. <laughs> I talked about that in the beginning of the vlog. Did you? Yeah, <laughs> That's I talk, funny. I talked about that I've had an on again, off again relationship with guitars for the past 20 years. I haven't seen the uh, footage that he filmed yet, so I don't know that. But yeah, yeah, Paul has owned guitars. He sold guitars. He's bought more guitars. He sold the guitars. He's bought amps, sold amps, bought more amps. But so these probably will not be the last guitar and amplifier I ever buy. Just, just saying. Probably just not. Mind. But you also go to the store way, 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 way more mm -hmm. often and come home with nothing. So that's why when you said you found a guitar you wanted, I'm like, well, get it because yeah. he's <laughs> been looking. Like, wow, it must be something good. <laughs> <laughs> he's been looking, people. Yeah. He needs to get it. <laughs> yep. All right. So anyway, uh, so that's gonna uh, that's gonna do it for right now. So okay. um, congratulations, me. If you guys got something new, congratulations you. Are you happy? I'm, I'm Look thrilled. at that smile. I'm really happy. This Isn't is awesome. he cute? Awesome. You're adorable. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. I guess that's it on this yeah, footage for right gonna, now. Yeah, I'm going to wrap it up. All right.